Hi everyone, welcome to the show. Uh, this is a deck tech with David Calf. Hi David, how are you? Hi Baz, yeah, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, some of you may know David from playing him at the tournaments as a regular tournament player for the callings, battle hardens, worlds. Um, you certainly do put the time and effort in. Um, you developed a chain deck um, when he was legal in um, draft. Uh, sorry, when he was legal in Blitz, um, that did very well. Um, so uh, when you said that you had a, a KO deck that was performing well on Talashar, um, I thought, yeah, you know, if, if you're willing to share it, let, let's get you on and share it. Uh, we're going to be following this deck tech or the deck through the RTN season, see how it develops. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll come back to David and see um, how that works. But KO, why KO out of all the heavy hitters? Um, so, I come from a background of, of competitive, competitive Magic the Gathering, um, which some of the viewers probably have played in the past, as a lot of Magic players are now sort of coming over to Fab, and mm -hmm. there's um, a strategy or a, a gameplay name that comes from mid-range, um, and I think in Flesh and Blood, mid-range has always been really hard to, to say what mid-range is. Is it Bravo, who all of his cards can block and all of his cards can attack? Mm -hmm. Um, or does that put him more into a controlling sphere? Uh, um, clearly, decks like Fi are very aggressive. But when you have a mid-range deck, it's normally in Fab. You're kind of in other games. You're doing the worst of of both things. Normally, you're the worst of control, the worst of uh, of aggro. But it also allows you to do the sometimes the best parts of those. In Flesh and Blood, that's always been to me has been uh, an issue to pinpoint a deck that is a good mid-range deck. And normally, it's something like Viserai um you know because it allows you to to block and then have these big explosive turns but it's it's hard to get a deck that falls in nicely without being you know super busted so when first red ko obviously the the fact he only has one arm is um it is a bit of a surprise and to be fair to lss um i'm actually really glad they've done that because from playing this deck so far i'm not going to say this deck's like you know, I think most people are realizing that KO has the potential to be tier one. If he had two claws, I think he would be tier zero. Mm. Like, I think he would be far the best character that we've had in a while because he, all of his upsides, um, you know, he's like, you know, Rhino has two claws for a reason uh, because he doesn't have all this additional text. But with mm. KO, he is a heavily mid range character that allows you to make him mites. You're, 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 you make a mite token. Um, based on a, a a situation where you you get to sort of affect the turn that's coming up yeah. and you get to flow and dictate the, the pace of your game so one minute you can sort of bash people up a lot the next minute you can block heavily um we will get onto cards later but a card like cast bones allows you to um you know play into a late game scenario or play hyper aggressively early you can really flow um with with ko which in flesh and blood i think is really hard to do because you know we all dream of a, a really cool flesh and blood deck that has loads of one-offs in it like we have well i know one buckle and and one this and one that but realistically because you see your deck in cycles of random cards and you mostly see your entire deck it's normally better to build a, a consistent deck um, and that means that you're normally leaning to one side of the spectrum more like you know phi you want to be heavily aggressive fi um because of the nature of it um and then you know other characters like bravo like most of the time you end up with a bravo deck that's like you present like 67 you know 72 cards and you normally you know we've played a fair few games baz i know with, mm -hmm. with me on bravo and you end up you know the dream with bravo is that you just bonk your opponent to death but that's kind of how you lose games with them and you end up being more control than the dream is of this bravo that flowed you end up with bravo more that just blocks and, and hits and occasionally you get to do something you know fun and exciting uh whereas ko um so far the games i'm winning where i feel comfortable i'm winning let's say i'm at five my opponents are at a zero but at the same time i feel in control yeah. you're not winning by large margins but you know it's it's there the game is going backwards and forwards so that's why i sort of gone with ko and, and also like you know he, he's a value engine uh, in terms of mites and stuff so it's 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 been interesting to sort of work um with with something so different really i think the one armed approach the one weapon approach is a great 
um start to fab i know we've had brief conversations in cars and stuff about this and uh some of the, the other guys from northampton like you know where do we go next in fab do we get you know mounts as a mount card a horse or do we get you know we saw it when we got like the double arsenal slot and a quiver you know taking away an arm is really interesting because now do we get you know ira in cc with one arm does now suddenly ira because ira is a scary concept right in She's basically a might every turn, whereas KO is Ira. I guess that's my best description, actually. The reason why we wanted to play KO is because we look, we saw it as an Ira light, an Ira for CC. Um, and you're not, you know, you don't get a might every turn, but you get enough, enough to sort of replicate that Ira impression. So, yeah, but we're yeah, seeing that. I we're think... seeing that now. You've got to work for benefits now, whereas before yes. the earlier characters, you automatically had those benefits. You've now got a, you. You've got to work to get them. You gain them, mm -hmm. and you're rewarded for that extra play. Yeah, um, I completely agree. And it's nice to see that they've gone that approach because I think it's going to start dragging us away from these. Um, you know, you've had Nathan on before with his act story list. It's a it's a heavy fatigue deck, and we don't. You know, we we had this conversation last night. We don't want Fab to go towards just this game of like everything's a three block, everything blocks. We always present seventy cards. Now we're getting heroes like Ko, where suddenly you can affect how your next turn plays out. So suddenly you're presenting like a seven power, <clears throat> a seven power attack mm -hmm. based off something you've done almost for like a free. You know, you discard something to Bloodbrush Bellow, for example. You discard a card, you get a might. That suddenly affects your next turn, which turns a six power on hit, CNC into a seven power. And suddenly you're affecting the game from earlier turns and you're actually taking a flow rather than just like four in, four cards into four cards every single turn. Yeah, it certainly so it's, seems it's nice. It certainly seems a little bit more effective. The plus one might seems more effective than Reinar's Intimidate because Reinar can, you know, sometimes get through some massive damage, but you know your opponent's literally going to be coming back with you with, with four cards. Um, but yeah. the, the plus one, you know, even we saw that at pre-release, the plus one from KO certainly added up over time. You know, like you were saying, like Ira, you know, Ira's ability. So um, uh, let's go through KO. So uh, attack action cards you own get plus one damage while they are in any zone other than the combat chain. So um, as a lot of people have alluded to, this has opened up a mass of deck building opportunity for Brute. Um, we've seen a lot more cards than normally we would see with, you know, under a traditional Reinar build. Um, and a lot more blues and a lot more yellows. But your deck... Um, doesn't necessarily follow the norm that we have been seeing from other KO decks. Um, and, and this is the beauty of KO, the, the, the scope that he's allowed to do for his deck builds now because of the cards that have been released. Um, you know, you, you are not taking sort of like favoured cards and there's going to be some people that go through this deck tech and go, why haven't you got that card, David? And um, we will be touching on those cards. Um, there's two in particular that you haven't got um, that that like, every brute player would just be like, oh my God, you know, this, this should be a main. I, d I don't know what you're playing at. Okay, so, um, yeah. Just to add to that, Baz, I do think what is nice about this design uh, for KU is, it, first of all, it's it's a deck, first of all, it's a deck restriction, but at the same time, it's almost a deck, um, it, it widens the options. I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say, but, you know, first of all, you, you build into this strategy and go, oh, I can only play five and above, which this list is heavily on the five and above only plan. But then I'm also like, how do I build a, you know, my brain's been turning, you know, especially today, how do I build a KO deck that kind of leverages that, the leverages the might, but then it, you know, plays, you know, uh, barrage and beatdowns and, and all sorts of different things. So it's weird how they kind of gone, you need to play fives and above, but I'm pretty sure there's out there, there's a list that's probably really good that, you know, doesn't, you know, only uses that for the discard advantage mm -hmm. when you want to make a might rather than, you know, um, I mean, Cast Bones is my favorite. It will go down to that later and I'm sure I'll gush about that there. That's my favorite card from this set. So I wanted to build a deck heavy around leverage in that card. And that's um, that's kind of where we've gone with this list. So, yeah. All right. So let, let's get on with it. OK, so that's KO. Uh, so next uh, we we'll go start with the equipment. we we'll go across Apex Bonebreaker. Um, so when this defends together with a card with six or more power, create a might token. Uh, so you're going to have to defend 
uh, with a six power card um, because it goes onto the combat chain. So we won't get a boost that way. Um, but I mean, literally, the, you're always going to be blocking with a card, aren't you? So this is blocking for five. That's what I'm surmising. I've not ha I've not played with this, but looking at that card, I'm going. That's a five block with a with a might um, token at the end of it. Majority of the time, you block with another card. Sometimes you just block. Uh, this card is just. You know, Goliath Gauntlet on steroids for years. We've played Reinar Blitz with Goliath Gauntlet. Yeah. This is just, you know, they finally given us some good gloves that, you know, you don't roll a one and they blow up on themselves and you lose the game on the spot. Yeah. Uh, well, you don't lose the game, but you lose your, your one block armor. So, <clears throat> you know, finally, we Brute's just been caught up with the rest of the format. But yeah, most of the time you want to be uh, blocking with this and then just sort of, you know, allowing your smaller hands to then, you know, hit break points and through on hits. So, yeah, it's a nice, nice upgrade for Brute, and obviously this will be a staple for years to come. Throw yeah, your Goliath yeah, Gauntlets in the bin. My Alpha <laughs> One's gone straight in the bin, you know, <laughs> oh, with my skull cap. Like, <laughs> you might still see some gamblers going around. Uh, right, okay, Maybe. so uh, <laughs> Cop. Uh, most people are quite familiar with Cop. It's sort of, it's a mainstay card in tournament players' arsenals. Um, uh, good for, for uh, freeing up clunky hands. Good for clearing arsenals. Um, it's, it's just an all-round crate card. Um, would, was there any have... other helmet you might have put in, or is it always cop? I thought this was the the first card on the two of of other players think I'm insane for not playing a particular card because everyone obviously fleshbag. Uh, I can't remember what the, the the second part of the the title is on that one. The the fleshbag helmet, the Scowling. the block in Tim helmet. Uh, a lot of people like to you know fantasize about that card being a two block that generates you like seven points of value because you know you stop your opponent coming in with their anathos or their um you know whatever their second attack their snatch or whatever um and i did play fleshback to start with because you know everyone tells me i'm insane for not for not playing for playing that card but what i found with ko is because of how you present the game plan as it plays out it doesn't play out like you know how you expect a brute to play out or how you know we've only had reinar in cc before and he either plays super defensively or you try and combo somebody you don't really get um you know very flowing turns it's either block out your full block out for a bunch and then barrage 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 smash you for like 20 28 rinse and repeat or it's you know you don't really get many strategies i mean mansan obviously had great success with um his Levia Reinar build, which was just Reinar with Levia as the hero, yeah. where it was just block, 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 set up that second cycle. But Crown of Providence, um, what I've been finding is if you put a bad card in your arsenal with this deck, it most of the time gets stuck because um, a lot of these cards that you have to play to make the deck work that are bad, there's not many, but there are a handful, they have a cost, and then the cost is normally three. And to get them out of that arsenal again is a pain. And then when you lose that arsenal slot, you lose a lot of viability. So Crown of Providence allows you, and also if you draw, let's say you draw uh, an all red hand after you've done something like um, uh, a cast bones or you've got a blood rush bellow to go, um, being able to have that chance to just sort of get that red hand and then jam it um, is, is big and, and can be the difference between winning and losing. So I had a bunch of games where I ended up with a blue in Arsenal or um, one of the sort of the discard, um, the wind ups in arsenal where they cost three to play so it's not the worst for a two card hand but it's it's not where you want to be and you know being able to cycle that card out at an instant you know a, a notice to, to sort of get back in the game is is fantastic so um i've gone back to that but I'm, I'm sure there's lots of people out there who are you know calling me insane for not wanting to play play a flesh bag um but yeah that's kind of where i've landed so far all right that's cool uh so uh Fyandal Spring Tunic. I don't really see KO in a, in a load of finery. You know, he's normally got bark bone strapping, <laughs> something like that to give him some extra money. Um, yeah. But you've got him in these fine garments. Uh, why Tunic over any other chess piece? So basically, um, I think the options are you have you have this one. You have obviously there's um, there's cross strap and obviously a bark bone is is kind of like this but but not now once we get onto the list we'll find that there's a few i, I call them the the holy trinity so far of, the, of, of ko uh a reference to you you there if anybody's listening who knows that one but basically there's there's a, a, a nine power cards in the deck and, and two of them require one resource to play mm -hmm. so tunic does a lot of heavy lifting in there it does block one whereas cross strap doesn't um cross strap also requires you know 
if you only use it once you're getting two resources out of it but you know if you use tunic once and you block once with it you're still getting two points of value out of it so if you ever use it three twice in a game with a block you're getting three points of value out of it i you know if they do come around and give us a tectonic plating of, of some description for brute um <laughs> we'll obviously swap straight to that but i think right now this is the best option and obviously um you know Tunic is a, a staple in this game, as we all know. Oh, yeah. Um, and I do think they're kind of trying to push it away from everyone just playing Tunic by default, whether that you get, um, you know, we've even seen it with this new warrior chest that's come out and everyone's like, oh, it's fine. And now suddenly everyone's playing it and so it's really grains good. Of, grains of blood spill. Yeah, the one that makes a bigger um, token. A bigger token. Yeah, yeah. And it, you know, suddenly everyone's gone like, eh, will this replace the current? Th-? And it's nice. We have options in that. Now they have two, two really good chests. So, I think eventually Tunic will be a card that everyone remembers for how insane and it probably might even still see um you know um cyborg play or, yeah. or do, do you play, find but... as this is your main chess piece do you find that you are um your gameplay is more of an ebb and flow you're waiting to get the third counter so then you have an explosive turn so you have some slow turns build up to the to the third counter and then you're really popping off every three turns um not not quite every three turns mm-hmm. no um it, it 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 normally it it's really weird because it, it normally um tunic what normally allows you it, it you normally are like one short for doing like a little pokey claw in the middle mm-hmm. followed by an attack yeah. or you want to do like you know you've just done a, a big cast bones or you've set up a bunch of mites or an agility and you want to go like a, a two power attack into a two power attack so tunic allows you to, to, to sort of sneak that in but then there is times where you're like I put this blood. We'll, we'll talk about these obviously later. They all work differently to how they work in Rhino. But you like you are some blood rush bellow, and you're like, okay, let me. I'll pair this up. I'll get the value, and uh, and I chug on. So it's 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 not quite how. It probably is. It probably is roughly every three turns you're trying to set it up. But it's mm-hmm. it's less so than, you know, we've had other decks in the past where literally every third turn you want it. You know, Oldium for example. Every third turn you you use your tunic because you need to reset it. Yeah. Whereas um. It cares more about eking the value out of it when it's there. Um, and yeah, as I say, I think it's the best chess that we have available right now. And I, I don't think it's, you know, perfect world. But, you know, it does the things that we want it to do. And, you know, cross trap might be a better option. I haven't actually tried it, but I'm someone that loves to block. We played a, a fair few games, Baz. You know, I like to block nowadays, which <laughs> surprises me. But you know having that one extra life you know sometimes can buy you one extra turn so i do yeah, like the ability indeed. to be able to block yeah right cool tunic done uh mandible claw which seems to be the go-to weapon uh claw over mini meat axe um um yeah um basically everyone thinks with this deck um that you somehow are attacking with claw quite a lot um and actually you find that you don't um as i just described sometimes you just come in with two attacks which you know as we go through the cards we'll we'll talk about that but you only attack with claw every now and then and when you attack with claw you want the ability to have it to have go again and also with the wind-ups it's really good because you can attack with claw your opponent could be like "Mm, do i block do i not and then you give it go again most of the time it's not super relevant um but claw is it's that media i think I think if you didn't have Blood Rush Bellow in the deck, I think you wouldn't play Claw. I think you would play Mini Me Axe okay. and go with a slightly different strategy. But Blood Rush Bellow is so good. It's not as good in this deck as it is in Reinar. Mm-hmm. And we'll get to that in a bit because I've certainly been in some games misplaying Blood Rush Bellow. I've kind of, you know, Reinar, you normally can go really trigger happy when you draw that Blood Rush Bellow. You can, you draw, you play one, you draw another one. Oh, I'll go again. Let's keep going and, and smash my opponent. In this deck, it doesn't work quite like that so it's um yeah and i said earlier i think in the intro if we we had two arms with two claws i think you could play this deck as it is and then sometimes set up this double claw blood rush bellow turn and i think that would just be miserable because i think you know twice a game you'd probably be able to present like 28 damage mm-hmm. uh, around doing the normal stuff which is kind of scary so it's nice that they've kind of gone this route with him heading down a bit okay uh scab skin levers most brute players uh, love a scab skin levers, uh, apart from if you roll a one. Uh, are you are you tending to use this just for armor, or are you risking it with a roll, considering you haven't got any gambler's gloves? Yeah, a few people have said to me about beating trackers, get me action point. But once again, I think three life is a two life extra on a beating trackers is a turn. Um, and also, you know, 
I think me and folks, Matt folks, um, and uh, a few others once had this conversation on an underground in uh, some European city for a, for a call in. Mm. What do we think would be the most busted card if it was generic? And we all agreed scab skin leathers because if you're losing the game and you roll a six on scab skin leathers, you know, let's say you're, you're heavily losing, you know you're losing the game, and you go, no, okay, no blocks. And then suddenly you roll a th- you three action points and you bonk your opponent for 18 or whatever. Suddenly you can get back into a game. So, uh, and we'll talk about another, there's another hel- a helmet that I really want to test some more because I think it's this um, having a card that says, I'm losing. Give me, give me a one in six chance to get back into it. Sometimes you only need two action points to sort of, you know, gear things up. Um, it's surprising. So yeah, we all know what scabs goes, but everyone loves it. I don't like rolling it too much, but I think it's nice to have that backup plan when you're losing to the hell Mary of, you know, one six, and it's you know suddenly the the game's back in my yeah, yeah. Uh, on my side of the pitch. Indeed. Okay. Right. Cool. Let's get to the bread and butter of the deck. Sixty six cards um in in your main deck uh you're still sort of like you know working things out uh so uh assault and battery we got reds and blues it's got the new beat chest yeah. so you can discard a card with six or more to get the beat chest ability which in this case is an agility token um fantastic for ko for getting go again um for for the next uh for the next turn um yeah obviously blues are fives reds are sevens um very nice especially if you're clashing uh, yeah so sorry add? just a comment yeah i will yeah, uh quickly on the uh, on the 66 card point mm-hmm. uh to me this is my list this is the stock list now um coming from a game like magic you have a, a, a main deck and a sideboard and a lot of the time in fab I've, I've kind of developed like that which i actually think is is very it holds players back quite a bit because in flesh and blood in, in an average game you will see your entire deck at least at least once if not you go around again Mm -hmm. so in theory you'll see every single card whether it's a 70 card deck 80 card deck you know we've all played with 72 bravos we've seen every single bloody card in our deck sometimes now what is a deck like this is basically most of the cards do the same sort of thing and there's no there is power cards but there's nothing that you want to desperately draw so when i've come to this conclusion on 66 because i feel this is how the deck flows also you want to keep this this thought in mind that there is fatigue decks they do exist and this yeah, is yeah, a, totally. a, a, you know you are you are discarding you are coming up with two attacks of turns you are trying to combat that so i think 66 for me i've been really enjoying this number because you know in a deck like briar or Fi, if someone said to me oh i'm going to present 63 i'd be like you're you're mad because your best cards are channel my heroic and you know, fire art of war you want to draw those as quickly as possible okay. um so why would you present more cards because you're not going to fight when here you can play your turns and you can win games without seeing the bloodrush fellows without seeing the art of wars without without but you obviously you will see them because there's nine of these power cards but they're not ones that you know you know if you draw if you're on the draw with fi and you're open in hand you know your opponent attacks you you draw your four and you have that art of war you're like oh like this is so much of a different game if you draw if you draw two art of wars in the first three turns with fi the games are so much different than if you don't do that mm-hmm. this deck you don't get that um so you're not so constrained by the 60 card limit um so yeah. that's that's my point on that we certainly um, saw um daniele suffer in um world's top eight because he didn't draw a didn't draw a uh, art of war with his fight so um you know you're yeah. saying fine he's art of war <laughs> yeah we, we yeah. saw like, daniele suffer for that and so sometimes when people build they say add cards in you can't just add all like red cards in. you can't just add like yellow cards in. you have to when you're building a deck, like I come to the 66 because I wanted to add Art of War in um, and I wanted to add Sensor in and the numbers all, all worked out how I saw it as like this stock list. And you can obviously you know take Art of War out if you want to play against aggressive deck, you want to block, mm-hmm. you can make those tweaks. But um, this is where I'm at in terms of like what I would, what I'm submitting into most people when I play and I sometimes I'm just adding three cards on top because most of these cards do exactly the, the roughly the same thing and that's why they're in the deck. They either have go again or they they you know well most of them just bonk people like this is the strategy of the deck you're just beating people up with two attacks a turn so a lot of the cards do the same thing and there's going to be matchups for example bolton you play six c and c's in this deck so that's when you want to then push the deck down to you know 60 streamlined cards so you can draw your sensors your cncs yeah because you know we'll go on to it in a bit there is other cncs in this list and that's where you want to get your opponent dead before they you know 
you know, quadruple saber you to death and murder you in your sleep sort of thing. <laughs> so, yeah. So there is there is that. So, yeah, um, just for me to point out um, this. Uh, whilst we've got salt and battery on the screen, uh, bl the blue one's free. It blocks three. Um, it counts as a sick powering in KO. Um, has a really cool effect of making an agility token. So it's not, you know, if you need to play it, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. um, the red one, on the other hand, is a card that I saw at first and I was adamant that the card was broken beyond belief. I thought it was insane that people were playing two in their lists. Um, yeah. At, at, at worst, this is a, a red Fendals, you know, if you just, uh, you, it's a three for seven, so you can beat somebody up with it. You don't, you know, go game in life, but it's a three for seven with a block, block three. So, uh, and then sometimes you discard. Um, this is a card for me right now, which is a, the flex card. So this might change for like um, uh, an agile wind up red, because I think the three cost in this deck is is much harder to achieve than playing two cost cards. Yeah. So right now I just see it as like a value card, um, but it's a card that's on the chopping block um, just because of the restrictions. If it, if it costs two, obviously this card is beyond insane. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you wouldn't get the three bulk value for that. You wouldn't yeah, get the, yeah. the effect. But the, the, the blue one is, is you know, if you, if you start opening hand, your opening hand's rubbish, you can do that to get that agility token or whatever, and you can block with it. But the red one is a little bit more, more stringent. So to me, that's there's a bunch of cards I want to try out over this. But, you know, still a good card. It still does exactly what you want to do, which is make an agility token um, when you do it. But I say, uh, you know, especially when you look at the wind-up cards, they still count as brute cards. So they still hit that requirement for Bird Rush Bellow. So that's, this is one of the cards that, for me, is on the chop and block of find other things okay so when we touch back we shall see if this is still in the list bear fangs when it this attacks draw a card discard a card uh if it's a six or more power get plus two power so um yeah fantastic yeah. uh used to be in ko decks um <laughs> the original ko deck it's just like oh my god we're coming in for 14 um so yeah a, a brilliant card it's a two cost um so uh, but it's a no block it is a mobile block. So I posted a rough this rough list on, on Twitter and people said to me, Oh, there's no wild ride, there's a pole pin, like what the hell? Yeah, yeah we'll And get Bear Fangs is in that yeah, uh well, we can get it we can get out now, we can get out in the air is that the tr <laughs> this is like the tr the trilogy, right? These are the trilogy of the slightly different brute cards that are all roughly the, the same concept, right? They yeah. draw discard off the top. Now Bear Fangs, um, when you look at this deck, Wild Ride has or you, you, most of the time it will have go again in this deck but the times it doesn't you start the if you start the turn with a wild ride and you do miss you've probably just completely destroyed a whole turn of, of setup yeah, which yeah, is not yeah. great yeah. you can get enough agility tokens that you can dictate when you have go again at the start especially if you play the the red wind up agility over the assault and battery it just increases those odds even more <laughs> now what bear fangs is bear fangs it's a great starter because if you have an agility token and you miss somehow it's still wild ride at that point right because it has go again six however if you ever you ever do get the um the plus two out of it which most of the time you will in this deck because there's only nine cards in the deck that aren't six power yeah um it becomes it becomes a, a swing big it becomes a swing big um you know that gives you a mic token swing big actually this 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 almost insane to say that this card is actually slightly better then swing big in this deck and swing big is you know it's a 20 something euro card now for a standard non-foil mm -hmm. it's probably one of the best brute cards printed in this game and this card in this deck this card is if you discard a six of this let's say you have a three card hand or you you play this from let's say two card hand you play this from arsenal you pitch you discard a six not only does this become you draw a discard you're right so you're you're getting that value you, you, two card hand sorry i'm going off you can have a, you can have this and another card you just draw and discard a six two card hand you get eight power plus a might so you get nine power for two cards yeah which plus, is plus just you're bonkers. not giving your opponent the quicken if they decide to block yeah and it's mad to think that you know let's say you hold a card in hand and then you you know you have an arsenal target after that and you're still presenting nine power it's that might that might takes this just over the edge now yeah you have a no block, um, which is why the big discussion of Wild Ride and Pole Pin, why they're not included. I don't like having cards that don't block. Um, but those two cards that you want to start the chain. And within this deck, when you have an agility token, if you start with a card that has go again, 
then you have double go again, which is not great. Now, we you will see later on there is a few, you can see underneath here, there's a cheeky zealous belting. That player has two block. So, you know, the turns where you don't have an agility, it's great. And the turns where you do, you can block with it or ask and it'll set it up. So, um, also, uh, the, you know, the original start of the convo was, you know, KO is, is mid-range. So, do you really want to be stuck, you know, just dying with a bunch of no blocks in hand? Mm. Um, and you want those to be high impact. So, yeah, uh, to me, I didn't, you know, by the way, I didn't believe in bear fangs at all when someone mentioned it. Put it in the deck. Um, over wild ride and every time i've played it i'm like this card's insane so uh, i'll give ben westmore a shout out for that because his list had it in i thought it was insane i was like this card's awful like when have we ever played this before uh turns out it's just it's just crazy so yeah <laughs> nice it's right, two as well so it's nice and cheap <laughs> <laughs> so you kept going on about it it's a new one yeah. cast bone yeah. zero cost reveal the top six cards of your deck create a might token for each card with six or more power revealed this way put the reveal cards on the top of your deck in a random order if you control six or more might tokens create an agility token um yeah yeah i mean you're saying that you've only got a few cards that aren't literally six power um or will cl be classed as six power because they're being revealed not on the on the combat chain so yeah this I mean, how many times have you not created six might? Uh, sometimes you create five, uh, but then you can also dictate it by you know leading with a card that has go again. You discard, you make a might, you make the five. I've done it once. I've made three. Mm. I think it was like you know sometimes you just that's going to happen, right? Like yeah, variants. Yeah. We have nine cards in the deck. It counts. It's you know the first one you play if you've played none of the other cards. However, what this card is, it costs zero, which obviously is a one card hand at worst. Mm -hmm. Uh. It blocks a three, which is its flaw, which, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, magic players listen, it's the force of will argument, like it's blue, it, you can use it with force of will, this is the the fab logic, right? It's three, it blocks three, how bad can it be? Um, however, when you finally, you get that turn where you don't have any might, and you 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 make the six and the agility token, it, it feels like you've broken another, because you see it as it's, it's six points of power. But it, it it's not six of points of pound. It's on the following turn. It adds on to what you're already doing. Yeah, yeah. And in fab, that's important because you know if it was a zero six power attack, your opponent's face for one card. Your opponent just blocks two cards, and we carry on trucking, right? You know, obviously that that would be broken. But we carry on trucking. But the fact that you transfer these abilities into the following turn is so um, instrumental in getting across the top of decks that want to drag the game out because you can pitch cycle this. If you're playing against somebody who's slow and steady, you win the race. Mm -hmm. You can just pitch it, go back round, keep the life total nice and high. When you've cleared out those art of wars and those blood rush bellows, you then go, "Here we go. I'm a hundred percent. You know, you maybe not a hundred percent, maybe, but you know, if you spread them out enough, that you could, you know, you start getting into that mindset of, I've just pitched one a few turns ago. Do I hold? When do I? When do I pitch this one? Blah blah blah. But most of the time, you can dictate that you're going to get the full value of this, and you can sort of pair it with other cards to make sure you get the full value. But I tell you what, Baz, there's been no better feeling in this game than the first time you play this and you get the full value off the top when you reveal those six and you go, "Why have I been doing anything else? Yeah. Like, why has this card not been legal for years? Because it feels so good and it's so powerful." The thing is, it kind of reminds, if you get the full six, it kind of feels like the old KO's gone off. I've rolled the six. You know what I mean? I've got the, I've yeah. got the double value out of my power. Um, so, yeah, it certainly yeah. certainly makes it feel like KO's, you know, back to his berserker runt days um, when, you, when you draw all six. Okay, sensor. Um, when this hits a hero, name a card. They can't play the name card until the end of the next turn. It only costs one, five power. So six if you reveal it in a clash. Um we, I mean, traditionally, this was used against Katsu, weren't it? That's what most people were playing it against. Um, this is in your main deck. Yeah. Um, so. So yeah. So there's only there's only three cards. Uh, I think it's three cards that uh, cost that like cost one that block three that come in for five, which obviously counts as a six in this deck. Mm -hmm. um, that this deck can play. So there's sensor, critical strike, and there's the one from Dent dynasty that is a brute one and i can't remember but madcap something or another but that yeah. requires you to discard a card so it's, it's like a little madcap bit more charger and you've got madcap muscle yeah. so there's like three of it's two two cards i think yeah there's a there's another one as well from oh. another set but the concept is this blocks three 
it costs one and once again it comes back to this idea of you know you start your turn with an agility token you, you play your bear fangs you smash in for you know you cast bones or whatever you smash in for your hundred and then you go and here's a little cheeky sensor at the end um and obviously you know we're in a game where there are power cards everyone's everyone's playing you know cards that you want to name so sensors on here is not irrelevant and the fact it costs one is really you know really also if you want to force this through you do cast bones whatever suddenly you've got that might uh you know the plus six from the might coming in for 11 mm. um you name me you know i think i played a game against Kasai the other day and i was like the only way i think they can get back into this is they have a cash in and then it's like my opponent just sort of arsenal the you know you know pass back the turn and then at the end he like showed me the the cash in and i was like wow there we go like you know um they were trying to set up a one card you know convert it into two cards do 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 something when we're both at low life so okay. it's it's a card that i know if i you know i qualify for worlds and and you know nats and stuff if i do play this deck and i play this card it's a deck it's a card where i'm going to sit and i'm gonna to have to review deck lists and learn all the cards like what to name mm -hmm. i you know I've, i kind of played against two olympias on on talishar and i couldn't remember what spoils of war was called so i named something else and then my opponent went spoils of war and i went like obviously in the tournament you can ask a judge i want to name the card that on hit makes two copper blah 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 gives go again but i can't remember it so on but on tally show you just whatever i'll just name glint because i can't remember what the card is i want to be called right. but it's a card that rewards that and it's you know there's not many cards that that do what this does and it does everything you want in this deck so it's it's surprising really because it's a card i don't really like in flesh and blood because there's so many you know cards that you know you just name at random because they're good you play as bravo you see people play sense and they go oh name them oh crippling crush because you kept four and then your opponent has a spinal anyway with a bloody pummel or whatever and it's like well <laughs> great i had a one for five not not really that exciting but yeah i think this card has legs and um rewards player knowledge yeah indeed a bit like chains of em eminence uh command and conquer you touched yeah. on it slightly uh a card that most of us know by now Six power, two cost, no defense reactions, <laughs> destroy Arsenal on hit. Um, it's, it's never going away. It's an awesome card. Um, you love to play it, hate to have it played against you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, um, you know, we're going to, you know, touch on this quick. Uh, cast Bones, just giving it plus six. If you put have one of these in your Arsenal, you play a Cast Bones, the next turn you come in, in for a Command and Conquer for 12. For 12. And, you know, oh, if your opponent doesn't have a, a cop anymore, again. it's just... We'd go again, and then you know I've done it before. I've gone command and conquer. We go again until we'll see. There's um another command and conquer a little bit later on a brute brute one. But you know I've done it where I've gone command and conquer, command and conquer. And my opponent is in chat. He's like, really? Question mark. It's like, well, what do you think was in my arsenal? Like nothing. Like you know you you can you can set these things up, and um it does happen. So it's nice that you know we finally have a, a hero. We have a hero that can play double command and conquer. So you know. All these combo decks now they can go in the they can go in the bin bats you throw your <laughs> boltons in the bin uh, I, I, yeah I, I don't think bolton players are too happy with you saying that uh enlightened strike mm. uh another mainstay card we see it a lot always yeah. holding it, their value is, six in ko uh, six power yeah. six power baz you can discard it to blood rush bellow so yeah it's once again it's the the whole two card seven uh uh you know six power discard and then you can get the, the five five power go again and agility tokens means you can draw a card or make it come in for seven so you know it gets a little bit more legs in this deck than it does as already it sees infinite play and it's you know and i don't think it's going anywhere in ko no. in any version of any it's version not of going away in any deck most likely uh runner runner yeah. uh when this attacks if it's got go again create an agility token so you're just carrying it over to your next one uh fantastic card people were saying this is uh one of the cards to get from um you know from heavy hitters um certainly works well in ko for sure yeah i wasn't i'm not gonna lie to you baz i think i was on the other end of the spectrum for that when i first saw this card i was very unexcited for it like yeah. a two power six it blocks three yeah that's great like you know the floor is not that hard but when it attacks against go again you think it has go again you create an how you know how often are you going to want to just play a, a six for two that gives you an agility. but actually yeah cards insane like as you know you play out of war as well um you have you, you recycle that agility it comes back to that you know two costs into two costs or the two costs into one cost uh, mm -hmm. strategy so it, it, this is almost like your uh, when i keep saying about you don't attack with claw that often this is almost like when you you kind of replaces your claw on those turns where you think normally you'd, somebody would think you would go like weapon attack or attack weapon normally you're going like runner runner into like you know something else and once again you know 
uh, I keep coming back to your cast bones giving everything plus, you know, it, it might only be 12, 12, no relevant on hit damage, but the value you're getting from recycling that agility token plus, you know, we, all st- we only start at 40 life, most of us, I, you know, KO slightly, uh, he's still on 40 life, I keep forgetting he doesn't get shrunk, but some of the, you know, you've come in for 12 when you make a a, a, a quicken for the next turn, your opponent still can't just afford to take 12. So, yeah, yeah, indeed. yeah it's a great card and, you know, blocking three is nice and it's it's cool that it's uh, obviously one of these, these dual class things. I'm hoping to see some runner runners appear in some warrior decks in the future. Oh, I'm sure they will, for sure. Uh, right, okay, so Savage Feast. Additional cost to play Savage Feast, discard a random card. Uh, if you drew, if you discarded a six, which is not too hard to do in this deck, uh, draw a card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh this is itself. like if <laughs> it's like if e-strike kind of had like a baby with like bare bare fangs and sensor and stuff and it it you know it's a great it's it, it's one of the one cards that you play at the staff that is one of the two uh, a handful of cards that are rng there's not many in this deck and it's one of the reasons why i try to stop adding wild Ride and pulp and it adds more rng into that this if you start if you have an agility token you start with this it has got some rng in it. obviously you try and control that with how you play it on your hand and how yeah. you've blocked but the fact that it it discards you get a might and then you draw up means that you basically just get to make a might for free um, and obviously it's a great you know come in let's say you come in with a run and runner for 12 or run and runner for six and you get the agility and then you play the savage feast you draw that you discard the card you get your might you draw you draw, you know, hopefully a good a good card, a good red card. You put it in your arsenal, refill your arsenal for next turn. You've got that agility token. You know, you're not, you're not down any value. You're actually up up a bunch of value. So, yeah, the solid card. Probably sees playing most Brutalists, and it probably will for a good long time. Yeah. This, this card kind of reminds me along the same lines of Skullcrack. You just get a benefit, like a Skullcrack. You get a plus, plus, it's one, mad to, plus one resource. It's mad to think when I first started playing Blitz, Reinar, nobody was playing Savage Feast. I ended up playing two at Madrid. Like, no, but hardly anybody was playing Savage Feast in the deck. And, you know, obviously, Beating Trackers comes out, and everyone's like, oh, Savage Feast. And I'm like, well, we had Sandskets planned before. You know, the, the, it was all, it was already there. So it's, it's mad how that card's kind of, I guess you look at it, you know, to start with, and it seems like quite an expensive card, but actually, when you pair it with a bunch of things, it suddenly becomes really, really good. Nice. Uh, Swing big, you touched on this. Bear Fangs is like it, but um, uh, it's more of a benefit to your opponent if they block out um, and get a quicken token. Most people do block out um, and gain a quicken token, um, but it's whether or not they can actually use it to their benefit in the in the, in the following turn. Because um, eight's yeah. not the easiest thing to block. No, uh, this is obviously a, a premium card. We we've all seen the combos of claw, claw, swing big, deal twenty. You know, after a blood rush bellow. Uh-huh uh you know it, it does everything you want it, it, it attacks for eight cost two block three can't go wrong can't really say a lot you know you have mites and stuff in this deck suddenly you start making that eight you have two mites it's only 10 much harder to block out then you know you give up a whole hand to get a quick and token then your opponent just smashes you again and suddenly you're in a downward spiral so you know there's a reason why this card is is, is sort of reaching that 30 euro barrier now i think yeah. um so solid card have you come in for 14 you with it with the cast bones yet uh i don't no i don't think so with the swing big but <laughs> i've come in for like 10s and 11s with the might and your opponent's just like okay i i you know they kind of forced a full block it but then you eat armor and stuff no i haven't had any uh i mean that would be the dream right you get the kind of <laughs> cast bones into the swing big i mean you know and then you just completely uh beat up your opponent but i mean you can do that with i mean most of the time you come in with a big attack they're forced to block they don't want to take what you come in with a, an attack like um uh you know whatever it might be before and then you play this after it's still just as good it's it's, it's a great card yeah. obviously big damage Zealous Belting. Uh, it's not many times you're not going to get the go again with this. Um, most of your cards are going to count as six power. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, most people, uh, you know, most Guardian players, you know, you see this in Guardian decks. Um, this is their main go-to for a go-again attack. Um, so yeah, fits in fits in very well with KO, um, giving you giving you access to multiple attacks quite easily without an agility token. Yeah, this is what I was I was thinking actually in this deck is like I didn't see anybody with this in their list originally, um, but thinking about it, it's like a trivia question here. Has there been any deck outside of Oldim and Bravo that I've ever played this card in, in classic constructed before? Been trying to think because I, I don't most I don't of the time, recall it. 
No. Because um, even Reinhardt basically... didn't play this card. No. Uh, and this is the kind of the deck that the it's, it's competing with Wild Ride almost because it's blocks two. Um, mm -hmm. It's blocks two. It's still a six power for your reveals. Um, in the maybe board for this deck, we'll go into it in a bit quickly, we can uh, later on. Uh, I have Yellow Wild Ride. And that's a consideration for this card. So not the red one, uh, the yellow one. The yellow one is exactly the same stats in power. Um, the yellow one gives you more resources. The deck can be requires some resources to have smoother hands. Mm -hmm. So there's a consideration for swapping this out for yellow wild ride and trying that out. And also, you know, discarding can give you that might value, incremental, you know, snowballing of, of damage. Um, so that's that's my thought. It's 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 weighing up that. Um, extra resource getting that my token versus the two block potential of this card um, so that that's where that's at with that one but yeah is that a spell in it it is it's always has go again in this deck uh unless you know you're pitching really weird but yeah you should always just it has five go again and then you you know you smash them with another attack yeah indeed uh agile wind ups blues and yellows so let's slow show the yellow uh, three cost, uh, instant, discard this, create an agility token, comes in for six. Um, when we were on pre-release, you, you saw a lot of these cards get dumped from the hand when you were going second. Let your opponent set up on their first turn and then, um, you know, quick, quickly get them out of your hand to uh, create agility tokens, all the vigor tokens, um, and then and then draw back up to four. Is, is this the same sort of style? If, you, if you're drawing it first turn, you kind of like discarding them to get the, the added bonus. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time with this, um, these wind-ups in this deck, you want to just you'll be discard them on your turn mm -hmm. because then you create the might token, so it allows you to um, get that extra token basically. So it's it's an agile token plus a might token. You're getting so much value out of these yep. um, for free uh, as they are, and they obviously meet all the the blue ones and the yellow ones and the and the red ones all meet the. I mean, let's say we spoke about earlier playing the red one. Um, they all meet the requirements of the deck in terms of one in sixes for particular things. Yep. Um, so yeah, it, it, it just does everything you want. And obviously agile token is, is, I would say an agile token is worth more than a might token. So that's why you're seeing the yellow windups, but you won't see the might yellow windups though. I have considered them. I think the might ones are still really good. Um, but this agility token is, is, you know, so powerful um, in this deck and yeah, it's great. Okay. 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 Art of War. Uh, it's just like got the holy trinity of cards. Uh, you know, Command and Conquer, Light and Strike, Art of War. Um, are you using this more for the uh, go again to to you know go wider, get get multiple you know fives and sixes across the board as opposed to drawing the cards um, or giving plus um, ones? So a lot of the time you're doing the go again. This is a card that kind of fixes your bad hands, so uh -huh. you you pair it with Tunic. You try and you try and mitigate, you know, where you want to keep the advantage. You want to mitigate trying to fix a hand um, a little bit nicer. You want to use the go again, obviously, uh, most of the time in this deck. Yeah. But I have had games now. People really overlook this with Art of War because they go, "Oh, it's not worth it. If you're doing it for that. It's not worth playing it." But most of the time, you're doing the go again, draw two, right, to fix your hand to to beat your opponent up. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes you attack with a command and conquer, your opponent blocks two cards, Baz, and then you just go out of war, give it plus one. And they lose two cards, they lose their arsenal. And everyone will go, oh, yeah, but you don't get to use the second part. You can name whatever you want in the second. You can cycle away a card in your hand, draw two, and see if you can find a better ar arsenal target. It doesn't matter. You've just destroyed your opponent's arsenal, and they've just blocked two cards. So you've just eaten three cards there um, for attacking with a, a C and C pitch and a blue. Like, you know... The secret mode in Art of War is lunging press, and I think it's really underlooked because everyone goes, you don't get the maximum value out of it. But this card is versatile. It, you know, we have two sets of, of CNCs in this deck. We have a bunch of cards that, you know, run a runner that want to have go again. Um, and then sometimes if you've got the agility token already and you've got this and you've got that, you go, well, you know what, I'm just getting everything plus one and just, and just beat you up. Mm. Um, because why not? Um, and it and it's a yellow baz. It pitches for two. It's insane. Like you know, sometimes you just pitch it. And this deck is is can be resource intensive. Um, yeah. As we've seen in the discussion of why threes aren't great and ones are good. And mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you just pitch it and you say you don't in this deck. My my one tip to people listening and who are still in at this point listening to me ramble on, um, don't attack. Don't get yourself attached to Art of War and Bloodrush Bellow and and Cast Don't attack because you know other decks you draw them you go oh. 
you know, yeah, Art of War in Fi, I need to play it. I can't yeah, picture, yeah. I need to play it because this is insane. This this deck, don't do that. Don't attach yourself to these cards and go, oh, there's a Blood Rush battle. I need to, to do it, get maximum value out of it. I need to play this Art of War. If you need the resources, just pitch it. Let it come back around again. Um, it's They're not... They're not so insane that they're making your opponent go, oh, it's not fair. Why have you, you know, you drew the art of war on deck? They're all value engine pieces and they do what they you need them to do and they do a bit more sometimes, but don't attach yourself to them. Don't just think that because you draw, you know, if you draw Blood Rush, Bow and Art of War together, there's a high chance that you shouldn't play them both in the same turn and one of them should have ended up in your arsenal. So that's just a consideration with these cards. Yeah. I, know, I know like five players they, they tend to kind of go one an art of war turn followed by an art of war turn which is more favorable mm. than a double art of war turn um so yeah having, having having sort of like um you know you know what we you know these type of cards your value cards you, you're calling them sort of like turn after turn is a lot better than one massive turn yeah yeah, uh, especially in yeah you're going to apply more pressure overall beast within you're either going to love it or hate it you can die to it that's for sure um but it's quite nice when you actually do um just draw straight off the top and get a card in your hand um yeah <laughs> i think i think yeah um for me this card is um it was on the chopping block mm -hmm. uh in, in in original games but i've come around to this idea that it's you know it's a it's you need resources so it's yellow so it's nice it blocks three and actually anytime you ever do get to discard it to the a range of cards that are in this deck most of them let you dictate to some degree what you're going to discard so when you actually do get to obviously the extra card is is fantastic so i think this will probably just stay in the deck forever because um you know you're not doing kind of like a rhino thing where you're discarding at random a bunch and you're always discarding mm -hmm. but it pitches, you know, and there's a lot of twos and a lot of threes in this deck, uh, you know, so you've been pitching it around, it, it, it doesn't matter. And then if you ever, you know, just, you know, you pull it off, you discard it to your, your Savage Feast or your, beat, your Blood Rush Bellow, or, and then suddenly you're you're drawing that card, you're getting that Arsenal slot, and it carries on to smoothen the game out. So, yeah, uh, and we all know what it does, but I think in this deck it's, you know, I think in Brute everyone thinks, oh, you've got to play your, all your Massacres, you've got to play all your Beasts within, you've got to play all of this, all of that, because that's Brute cards that we know are powerful. Mm. But they're less powerful in this, but they still dictate, you know, this card is not as good as it is in Reinar, but it's still part of the value engine. Um, and obviously, you know, um, if you had a red one, you'd probably play that in, like, you'd work that into the deck somehow. It was seven power for three. Do you know what I mean? Because that would probably be better for hitting people with, because if you need to hit somebody with this, it's not fantastic. But, um, you know, you know, blocks three, it's always my fallback argument, I guess. Cards block three, it's fine. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Blood Rush Bello. Most brute card, a brute player should be uh, used to this. Most brute opponents are certainly used to this card. Um, if you want to see uh, not how to play it, uh, there's a uh, there's a, a blitz game where I'm playing Rhino and uh, completely fluff this uh, Blood Rush Bello turn. Um, I, I let it go to my head uh, and then I cocked up the order of my cards. Well, um, I could have killed Mike and it didn't happen. Um, th this card is just brutal. Absolutely brutal. I love it. I'm going to say something controversial here, Baz. So this card was on the chopping block okay, uh, for this deck for a while. Not f for a few hours. Um, and upon review, Baz, it was just how I was playing it. So I was playing it like I was playing Rhino in Blitz. or uh, you'd, I never played Rhino in CC, but how you imagine it, right? You play that, you draw that Blood Rush Bow, and it's that feeling of, oh, my opponent is going to, you know, they're going to sigh and they're going to roll their eyes and they're going to regret this turn. Yeah doesn't it doesn't it doesn't equate the same in ko so how we look at this card is it's a card that you line up with tunic it's it, it you help you you try and pair it up to help you fix these more awkward hands you only have one claw so you can't do anything like five five twenty and make your opponent you know wish that they had uh, cut your deck better or you know <laughs> not 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 sat down for the round yeah, yeah. but the maximum value you want to be trying to eke out this you want to you want to look at it as a one for four so you don't want to, and one for four, that can help you fix your hand and make a might. So if you look at it as a one for four power, that makes a might, it's one for five power, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, that's a great break for a, for a, for an attack, right? If you yeah, play yeah. a one for five with go again, you'd always play that in every, in every deck. So in a box three, once again, um, but what you don't want to do is trigger happy with these things where you play a blood rush, you draw another one, you play it again because it feels like it stacks up but it doesn't it comes back to this argument if you want to play them back to back 
Um, they don't. It's not as crazy as it is in Right Arm. It's very good. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But at one point, I was thinking, I keep drawing these, and I kind of play them, and I discard a card, and then I draw two, and then I'm like, oh, I just attack you for like, you know, I, I come in with a claw, and then I come in with a C and C, so I'm only getting plus two value. Yeah. You need to be looking at the windows of where you're getting that claw into attack, and sometimes pitch it. Because sometimes, you know, let's say a you know, prime example here, but as I told you yesterday, I was watching TV at the same time as playing a game on my mobile phone. Uh, <laughs> I saw Blood Rush Ballet in my hand, thought, oh, it's insane. How do I how do I lose the game? Pitch my blue play, discard a swing big, draw two reds, have a very mediocre turn. Then I look back and I'm going, what I should have just done, which pitch my blue, come in with a swing big. I had a might token left over, come in for that nine, Arsenal to Blood Rush. Don't have to rush it. You know, you're not just trying to get your opponent down. I know it's really easy to say, people go, well, yeah, obviously, but you know, these cards are they're different, you know, in different decks. And you know, as you say, like you, the first thing you jumped in here is like, oh, this card is is the brute card. It is the the sanity of the brute card. Um, yeah, it still is really good, but it it's not the same in this deck, you know, as others. Sometimes you'll play this and your opponent will be going, oh no, I'm about to get bonked for like eighteen, and then you go like you know, claw into C and C and your opponent's like, oh, thank God for that. Um, yeah. But, you know, you need to meta, you need to think about that when you're playing this deck and you need to mitigate that um, yeah, but the thing, more so uh, than in Rhino where everything's a brute. The thing is, I, I know this card from playing James Adams. Hi, hi James. Um, and he's very patient with this. Um, you know, puts mm. it in Arsenal and waits for the right turn. I mean, if you can, be, if you can, you know, uh, pair this with an agile wind up, get the agility token, you know, and then go into the blood road blood rush bellow turn you're going to come in with two big brute attacks um potentially aren't you so you're going to go okay so i'm hitting i'm yeah. hitting for 16 um you know yeah. potentially with, exactly. with a claw as well so you go that's 19 um so it's there it's yeah, just more it's, of a you've got to be more patient with it than, than more just more patient yeah you yeah. i think a lot of people think oh my opponent's drawn this card and they do the thing and it looks insane at, at the core but most of the time a lot of these cards is it's a little bit more uh, you want to get maximum value out of it. You don't want to be discarding a generic to this. You want to, uh, you don't, you always try, any attack you play to this will get a might, mm -hmm. but you don't want to be coming in with like claw into generic. You want to try and pair that yeah, up. Yeah. It's got to be so, you know, sometimes you can, and you can, you can still play this deck as in like you can cycle this round and block with a bunch of these cards, block, block, get back to these cards later on. So they're not normally dead um, in the late game. So, yeah, and I say, I think if we had double claw, you know, it would this card and obviously you can get those twenty point damage turns as KO. I think KO would just be clear tier zero. So I'm glad that they've only made it one claw. <laughs> cool. So we're getting we're getting near the end of it. Um of out of the sixty six. Clash of Agility. Um comes in for five, defense for three, uh attacks uh only costs two and it's a yellow. Um are you are you defending with this one more? Um because because uh, KO is actually pretty good at clashing. Yeah, so KO, by the way, KO is the the clash deck. Like when I play against Victor as KO, compared to where I've played Reinar, you win a, quite a lot of the clashes because you're a lot of the Guardian cards that are like not their big cards. Like I don't, you can't play Crippling Crush or whatever, but let's say Bravo or whatever these bigger cards. If they're not those cards, they're normally like sixes and sevens, mm -hmm. and you have a lot of sixes and sevens that get pumped up by one. So you actually win a lot more clashes than you think you would because a lot of their non insane cards are just like base five six seven and a lot of your cards on average can beat that so it's quite surprising when you play against victor for the first time you start to win more clashes than you thought and you're like oh this is interesting this card um i, I this card to me is is sigil of solace that makes an uh makes an agility token so it's gained three make an agility token now the cost of two is is pulling me around to play in the red one in the slot of the assault and battery okay. because if you need to play it you can play it and it's not so hard it counts as a brute still so it still works with blood rush bellow kind of feels in that same slot as the agility wind up red but that costs three so and there's also an argument that you might want to look at playing the yellow clash of mites uh just because you know their 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 bottom line is unless you play against a wizard their bottom line is they are sigil of solace make an agility um you know gain three make an agility then you can you know do something in your turn because uh you can you know make that work off of a block from hand so that's how i see it so yeah and and it's a yellow you know we don't play the red one over the yellow because the yellow pitches for two so yep. yeah cool nice and straightforward 
send packing. When this attacks a hero, banish a card from their arsenal when the chain link resolves. If this didn't hit, return the banished card to its owner's hand. Uh, um, it's just it's brute CNC. Um, <laughs> it's one of the it's one of the cards that you pair up with tunic as well. Um, because you know sometimes you're pitching a yellow and you get the extra counter, or you you want to come in um with multiple attacks or, or whatever so it's a card that sometimes requires tunics just to help you nudge it over the line but when you pair it with a might token it comes in for seven it kind of a weirdly kind of turns off a de-reacting arsenal so it's kind of like a yeah. cnc um and obviously if you can you know pass bones into this make them banish that you know de-react from their arsenal then you come in for 12 they don't block they just lose a arsenal card so yeah fantastic card for brute uh it, it's great i think this card's really well designed six power yellow uh block three it's nice it kind of replaces the filler cards in a lot of decks but uh ko is the only one that can really consistently push it to seven um whereas i think if this was a seven in reinar you know you'd be in there for a world of hurt but yeah nice card it's just you know we have six cncs it's where you want to be maybe jam in a remembrance at some point get those get those nine cncs on the go yeah, it, <laughs> but it's, no, it's, it's um, quite a nice um it's quite a nice card when it um when it's going against those heroes that basically want an arsenal like you know azalea mm. wants an arsenal well you know you've got a load your bow now um you know all those cards that basically get a benefit if they come out of arsenal you're just like well you're not getting that benefit you know like in pre-release you could say that's trading you're not getting go again on trading um you know there's a few cards yeah. that say if this comes from arsenal you get this extra bonus and and certainly send packing um you know it <laughs> the, <laughs> it's, it's it's a good what, detriment to those type of cards so um yeah it's, it's a very the, well thought card yeah what is the one advantage of this card as well is that it banishes face up which is huge if you start with the turn with this mm. because then you see so if they full block it you then know you know for against warrior you get to see if it's a bla the blade fluidry has now come out of the arsenal into the hand mm. you know and i've done it before where i've gone send pack in the cards come out my opponents full block this with armor and cards from hand. And then I've gone sensor. And then they go, all right, take five. And you go, name that card. And then suddenly they're now, they're still a card down on their turn. Whether it goes in Arsenal or not is, is, is beside the point. But yeah. it's something to consider. The banishing face up is a lot more relevant than, uh, you know, banishing it face down. Oh, yeah. So it's, more it's information. Funny that that, Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's funny that they put that at the bottom. Um, it's, uh, it's, yeah, that's a lot to the card. And the italics. Make, make sure you read the yeah. full card. Uh, Mighty yeah. wind up. Discard this. Get a might token. You touched on this earlier. Um, yeah. Uh, along the same lines of um, clash of agility. Double. Yeah. Double. Double might on your turn. It eats uh, six power to all the things. And you know people say blocks too, but I look at it as it's a blue. And how often you know in a deck like this when you're you're resource hungry, you're not really blocking with with your blues often mm -hmm. um and obviously yeah if you if you go first and play and you, you discard it and make two mites you're suddenly you know you draw a cnc cnc for eight or whatever you're just snowballing so yeah nice uh pound town beat chest when this attacks if you've beaten chest this turn create a might token that all important might token yeah uh, it's just a, a three block blue it's the same as the assault and battery really just kind of does something a little bit different there's not many five power blues and we're playing all of the good ones mm. um and all the ones that you can try and make value with on the play if you draw too many blues or whatever so yeah this is this is one of those yeah are, are you beating chest a lot with this um because it pairs with ko's ability so you're kind of creating two might aren't you with this one uh yeah so the, the dream was originally when I built the deck was with the, the, the red assault and batteries. We had red pound town in the deck. I had red pound town in the deck. Mm -hmm. uh, the dream was, yeah, we would be you know beating chest every time we drew them. And actually, because it costs three, it's so much harder to pull off. You need a blue. You need an extra card. It means it requires three cards mm -hmm. worth of equity for a seven power red that, you know, you don't get the intimidate value. You get a mite. It's not the same. So sadly not. But, you know, there's only a handful of blues that, cost five and this one does something if you on the play with it or you need to play it um you know and it's still a brute card that works with blood rush better to up to seven so Fair yeah right. cool uh reincarnate uh when reincarnate uh, is discarded at random put it on the bottom of your deck um uh, i've seen people playing yellows you're playing this in blue um obviously ko gives it an extra benefit 
is yeah. is that the reason to play a blue over a yellow for the extra resource and it's still get it's still a KO card really? <laughs> Yeah, it's better than the other blue options as well because of the fact if you ever discard it, it goes back in your deck, stops you getting fatigued, keeps those blues in the deck. Um, you know, the, the downside to the agile blues is when you're discarding, you lose a blue from your deck. But um, the other options are like Smash Instinct or like Brajin, Big Horn, and a bunch of other random blues that they don't, you're never really going to play them. Whereas this one, the upside is you basically get to put half, you get to draw half a card because you put it back into your deck, it keeps your deck nice and stacked up. and you know we all know fatigue's a thing so yeah it's it's one of those i think it's like the, the best of the the remaining blues really mm -hmm. the upside is at least you generate an white to go with it didn't you that that card for me is that is it a fighting point with a blue blue fendals blue 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 fendals which is a five power because uh sometimes when lexi was a thing it used to come in for five a lot mm -hmm. so sometimes in decks you would play like blue fendals because you block with a three and a two and you gain a life you blocked six points of value on a five power attack so you're actually up equity so that's a consideration, um, depending on how the format goes, that might just be replaced by Blue Fendals. Fair enough. Uh, Wreck a Romp, uh, mainstay in every Brute deck. Um, this was the only blue that, um, that, that Brutes basically cared about before. <laughs> I'm going to do this, Baz, quickly, because the, the first two iterations of this deck, I completely forgot about Wreck a Romp Blue. Okay. Um, I had other blues. I had other blue five powers in there that did stuff on the Texas. Discarding a card in this deck is 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 a little bit rough mm -hmm. uh, by force if you have to play this. Uh, and then I kind of was like, wait a second, I forgot Wrecker Romp Blue, but do I still want it? Do I ever still want to be able to play it? And then I realised actually it's seven power on a clash, which is just insane. So yeah, okay, it should have probably been in the deck by default. I think I learned a lot by not having it in the deck and then realising it should have been in the deck and I kind of thought about, well, you know, if you ever need to play your bad blue, um, you have to, you're forced to discard to this cost two which is nice because um all your other blues cost three but also clashing for seven against victor um and sort of like betsy and stuff is really really powerful mm. so um yeah forgot about it in the first draft just because you know jam you just want to jam some blues in your deck and start going uh completely forgot about it don't know why maybe it was on the second page of of, uh, of fabry um but um <laughs> yeah obviously a, a solid card yeah, KO obviously took you aside and gave you a slap and went, what are you doing? <laughs> you, you forgot yeah. about this card. Uh, inventory, yeah. uh, no fear. When does this come in? Uh, it's got a, a heck of a lot um, of text on it, but yeah, uh, basically. Yeah, this comes, in quite a, this comes in quite a lot. Um, it comes in um, at the moment. It's been coming in and sort of just adding on to the uh, current count, but mm -hmm. basically it comes in against Warrior, uh, Guardian, anybody that's threatening big attacks or attack reactions and and the concept of this card is it's just um it's a better sink below um and if you uh, basically when you play it costs zero is an instant if you all of most of your all of your attacks in your deck are six or more so if you have four of them in hand and you play no fear from arsenal you can basically it's just block six um from arsenal it blocks six, so it's basically just immovable um for free and it, it most of the time uh, you know, you can block a CNC with this uh, from if you play it from from the arsenal to to, to soak up the damage. Um, you can pair it up with a you know play it from hand and you discard three card, uh, banish three cards. It's five, so you can pair it up with a one block piece of equipment to block a CNC or um, it's just a better sync for this deck. And it also comes in against wizard. Right. Okay. So you know you can block any damage with this. So um, you know ruins Kano's day. Uh, if you ever do pair into one um but you know it, it it's it's just versatile and it's really strong and i think this is the one brute that it actually works in i mean it works pretty consistently i think a lot of the time you draw it and your opponent comes in with an attack or whatever and you just play it you get your value out of it because it's a zero for two but then if you pitch because most of the time in this deck you don't want to just always be blocking yeah so the fact that you kind of like block with them they block for one but then you get them back it's kind of powerful um, because the card's going to banish, obviously, so you can't block with them later that turn, but you get to block, like, one, one, one off them. There's three of them, so you get to block five for one card, which is, like, really above rate. It, it basically competes with Sync Below, but I think it's just strictly better. Maybe Sync comes back in on the discussion of trying to, you know, um, mitigate mitigate your hands, but right now I've just been trying this card out and I've been been loving it. Uh, reinforce the line. Most mecha players will know about Reinforce the line. Uh, was a mechanologist card really before um target and defending attack action card gets plus four uh you've got a whole host of uh, attack action cards in your deck so it works perfectly yeah um 
yeah, it's like most people's answer to CNC. Stick it in Arsenal and wait. Try and draw out the CNC. And yeah, I mean, down. what's the deck playing? The deck plays 57 attacks. So it's one of those. And it's it's one where it, this is competing again, once again, for Sink Below. Mm-hmm. Um, I like this because of, of someone coming from a fire background when you play against Guardian, which is like the big the biggest thing at the moment. Um, yeah. You know, being able to block three from hand and then coming in for that D react from hand to give the plus four straight away can normally, um, you know, wreck a hand. Let's say you're losing, you're in a bad spot. They come in with that crippling crush or that spinal dominated, and you draw the reinforce and you can go, oh, um, you know, a sink here would be would be awful, but reinforce here. So it's one of those cards. It's a, it, this 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 sideboard or this inventory is really streamlined. They each card does exactly what you want it to reinforce. Is a is a block, you know, no fears as a block and against wizard, and then obviously we'll get onto the next card as well. Um, but yeah. you know, you can change these cards, but it's interesting. Yeah, next one is sigil. Uh, for me, I didn't want to play any nor rune in this deck. Um, at the moment, mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but uh, <clears throat> obviously Vincent and Viscera exist. I think Viscera, your goal is to beat them up. You have six CNCs. Uh, the same concept with Vincent is you're trying to race. You can race, and I think you can. I mean, I've successfully been beaten fires by just beating them up. They beat me up. You can do do a much better uh, aggro deck impression when you want to than they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sigil is almost like your null rune, so uh, you know randomly gaining three life um, to to mitigate. Not to haven't hasn't been fully tested yet the logic on this, but it's it's hard to envision a world where you get to heavily pitch into a piece of null rune to to to, to sort of you know you one piece of null rune. You know, you don't. You only have eighteen blues, and you're still trying to make your deck function. Like against K K K uh, against Kano, against uh, you may have no fear anyway there, but against um this array, I don't think you really want to be spending your turns just blocking up. You want to be coming in with two attacks every turn and pressuring them. And also, I just love Sigil of Solace for this ability to you know put it in Arsenal. You wait until they think they got you. Or you wait for the CNC or whatever it comes around. But it's a card I'm exploring the options of. I don't think Norun is necessarily where this deck wants to be because against those heroes that make rune chance you still want to you know what piece of armor do we want to get rid of above like the gloves they block three points of damage and they present two two on top that's five the mm-hmm. boots block three uh, on attack and you know can roll you into a win out of nowhere so there's nothing where you want to just go oh i'll put in a piece of normal because you know in bravo for example the seismic seismic boots have their ups and downs so you can sometimes easily swap that out I don't even, you know, Dromai, I can't even see why we, you know, how are they going to get to an end game where they kill you when you're just beating them up and popping the dragons? Like, you know, obviously that could be a thing. We might need Norin for that. But in initial testing, my brain has said, um, you know, sigil for those matchups where, you know, you probably, without Norin, you could be in trouble versus Viscerite. So, you know, if you if you start the game and you just go first and you make a sigil of solace into a cast bones you're probably probably like uh shit <laughs> like yeah uh, you're gonna be on the back foot then yeah. so yeah i think it's this is playing nine gate now so you'll be going you know what i mean it's nine rune chance nine nine damage um that that's yeah. what they're building up to righty so that's in infantry tokens uh we saw those yeah fantastic so <laughs> let's get on to the maybes these are the these are the uh the maybe cards uh you touched on uh red agile wind up this is a replacement for one of the other yeah. options you've got in your deck at the minute um yeah <clears throat> uh it, so- it, you know brute card works with blood rush bellow discards does everything you want it, yeah. it probably fills in for the slot of assault and battery because they basically both make an agility token you hardly ever get to a- attack with red salt uh assault and battery for the full value so yeah, this is a, a massive consideration. Cool. Uh, amnesia. Uh, when this hits a hero, cards and uh, tokens, they lose and can't gain names until the start of your next turn. Cost two, attacks of six, blocks of three. Seems pretty good. There's a, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of cards in this maybe board, um, which I want to try. They're probably for different metas. Um, you can look at, you know, we're having them playing the Assault and Battery, or if you play Amnesia, or you play something else. Obviously, the more generics you put in the deck, um, the less you get the value out of the blood rush bellow becomes a little bit more awkward but these are all cards to remember that exist and they're all really good like when when amnesia is good in a format being able to follow up after a cast bone or after you know make it seven power off one might it suddenly becomes from a um you know a very good card against somebody to an insane card of like let's say this had is this defaulted to seven power by default 
you probably see, see this being played a lot more and this deck can basically make this seven power most of the time so mm -hmm. you know these these cards gain a lot more legs in this deck as considerations for you know actual cards and see so sensor is, is one of those cards that whilst it it it, it goes up to six on the break point so it's, it's a little bit different but because you can sometimes you know crank it up even higher the sensor ability you know obviously costs one so it's a little bit different but these are all things to consider. You'll see a bit of race on this, like a race face and, and humble, which fall into this category of, of cards that have good on hits that, you know, really easy for your opponent to block out if you're just playing, you know, um, a deck like Bravo, who, you know, he has to have Pummel to pair with them. And if you don't have that, it's just they block two cards and they keep trucking. This is kind of like a CNC, right? When this card is, that's when you play against Katsu, uh, suddenly Amnesia is, um, you know, absolutely bonkers when it comes in for seven because you're probably going to hit them unless they, you know, sacrifice the little armor they have and, and two cards so yeah, yeah. And, and if and they have both turns where yeah. well, they've drawn two blocks so <laughs> they've lost everything yeah, haven't they, really they lost uh, everything, yeah. okay so bingo um i don't think i've ever seen this card played uh, when bingo hits a hero they reveal a card from their hand if an attack action card is revealed this way bingo gets go again if a non-attack action is revealed this way draw a card uh, it's a five attack so six in ko um cost one and blocks for three it's just sensor light so if it's something i've considered the ones are really good um you know you have that agile token at the start of your turn you come in with a two cost power a two cost card like cnc with go again mm -hmm. uh you've pitched your blue and then suddenly if you follow it with like a bingo or you follow it up with a uh, sensor or you know savage feast discarding a card get your arsenal back these cards um they have legs and this has three block you know there's not many cards like this and critical strikes the only other one that has three block that costs one for five in this deck it's something to consider just because of um and also you play tunic so you know if you do a bunch of crazy stuff and you have no resource left you have a tunic counter and you just follow the, the last tack of the turn with your tunic you're getting your value there so mm -hmm. it's um you know definitely something to to consider might be good might be bad uh, uh, you know your other option is critical strike which is just this without a, an on hit text like if your opponent you know only has um non attacks or whatever you draw a card or if you don't you know you're in an awkward spot and you need to give it go again you get value from that that's it but it's just a yeah it's another card to consider that fits that criteria nice okay uh cadaverous contraband uh very good for um mm. uh fatigue plans that are coming against you so yeah it's, uh, um, it's not bad this card has been on the thought process for a while over a but once again assault battery is all because it it can rebuy your cast bones uh is the main target so okay. you know um you get to put an attack action card on, on from your graveyard on top of your deck so you know imagine if you play cast bones you play this you come in for 12 if your opponent takes any of that damage you just put cast bones back on top just sort of uh okay i'll get another six points with an agility token uh left so it's one of those ones that we see it pop up in some metas where everyone's like oh drain wise playing contraband i wonder what that's doing that's spicy or or whatever you, different decks every now and then they pop up with a contraband in a Izuri with contraband i think it's there's potential for testing here and you can get away with the yellow one in this so you could fill in um for the zealous belting or um, when you know you could try for those cards that you want to get a little bit more resources out and it, it does the same kind of effect Mm -hmm. cool uh once again uh, mentioned on the might token the might token taking any of these six power cards the seven is where they really shine so yeah, that's yes. something to remember as we continue totally clash of agility when this defends clash uh if you win the clash or whoever wins the clash gets an agility token um so uh you need agility really being ko uh two attacks is your mainstay yeah um why hasn't this made it into the deck already then we have the yellow one um, oh, okay. and the red one has obviously been on the periphery of, of of decision points it hasn't made it by default because it's a two for six mm -hmm. um which doesn't have an on hit um and so when you're competing with that if you make this a seven what do you get from that you don't get a lot um, and it's a card that you primarily want to block with but it's a card that could make the list because it costs two um and it blocks three um and obviously I think this is really if you're looking for that additional card that costs two and, and blocks three, you're looking at competing this with um amnesia. Um whereas this one you you know you feel good when you block with it. Amnesia has a lot of text against um uh, different heroes. But 
uh, that's where we're at with this card. It's, it's a card on the consideration, and it's, as we'll see with this next card coming up, uh, Clash of Might, Yellow and Red. They're both cards, you know, yep. that uh, have the same the same text, but you get a Might token. They're, they're cards, you know, the yellow one, you, can, you can't play um, six Clash of Agility, so you have to play uh, Clash of Might, Yellow, if you want under the yellow that does that. Uh, right. that does that thing so yeah yep cool uh down but not out oh god <laughs> i love this card this card was so good in the pre-release for me i was lucky enough to yeah. pull one it's is why the red ones made the um the cut because the other ones don't work in this deck but mm -hmm. the red ones made the cut because we don't know what this cc format looks like we don't know how often we are controlling fewer equipment and tokens than our opponent you know against victor sometimes they have three bloody tokens in play and then suddenly this card you know, two cards with a might, maybe have a might token as well. It's suddenly a two card ten uh, with overpower, and it hits, and you create all these crazy things. You play cast bones into this, and you get the effect of this pop off. So it really depends where the meta shifts to. You can only play the red one in this, but if you know, if the meta is suddenly everyone's getting bloody tokens galore and stuff, and you need the edge in the, you know, if you need the edge in the mirror, um, for example, maybe this is the card. Maybe you're down in equipment, they're up a token, and then suddenly you play this, and your opponent goes. We had two mites pop off at yeah, you had two, yeah, I had two mites pop off, and all right, so this is 11 overpower uh, on hit, okay, um, good. So, this is to me, this could be a, like a mirror breaker. Yeah, the thing a is, it's quite a lot of qualifiers you've got to get to get this full bonus less equipment, yeah. less tokens, less life. It's just like, yeah, it's a hell of a lot. Of, you know, the mm. bar is really high for you to hit, um, and yeah. this has got to be so well timed, um, to get this yeah. off. Um, but it, if you I, can, it just feels brilliant. I, I did yeah. it against Richard Carr on, on our pre-release, and I was just like, "Fuck it, out!" That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's a it's a card that's very meta dependent, and I think if the meta sways the way I think it will be, where we're having lots of tokens appear on each player's side of the field, yeah. it's a side, it's a card that you know comes into your deck, and suddenly you can you can claw claw back a losing game from it. So yeah, yeah totally yeah, big potential. Yeah, uh, right, a raise face. Uh, falls in the um, amnesia camp uh, of a card to consider for the meta blocks too but you know when this text is relevant uh, it's, it's very good and then uh, we won't sort of dwell on it too much yeah. because you know it has it's, it's the same as humble humble does you know stuff similar um, uh, I don't even know what the text I'm not going to lie to you Baz I can't remember the exact text on either of these cards but I know they do slightly different on hits just like amnesia and stuff and they're cards that not most heroes, you know, Azuri can like, you know, Azuri players get to, you know, bask in this collection of these different six power cards that they can play <laughs> at random and no one sees them coming. But when you get a might token every most turns, yeah. certainly these become seven power. They are considered consideration to consider, you know, if a meta comes up where uh, you want to remove your, your hero's power, uh, complete like a hero is so good, at, you know, their, their focus is, um, you know, removing the the hero power, for mm. example, like humble against Lexi was so was was such a powerhouse card to tell off the ability to flip their arsenal when you might have buggered them buggered them for the turn basically. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, these consider everyone watching. Obviously, we got quite far in the video now. We keep talking about the might token, but these sixes consider them as sevens, and so that's why they they have that mm -hmm. draw of of consideration. Yeah, as a mech player, I wasn't bothered about humble, but I hate a race face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wild ride yellow uh no wild uh, ride red um you you did uh touch no. on why that was uh bear fangs is kind of taking that point uh taking that slot yeah. but you are considering wild ride yellow um obviously we're looking at a six for the might token yeah uh, when it, it attacks if, if you do you do play this you'd probably play it over zealous belting uh right. just because you'd you'd want more resources in your deck and mm -hmm. then you have this potential to make this might token a bit more on almost on demand as say like more consistently and have a have a beginning of the turn starter so it, it kind of weighs up on that you know do you want a zealous belt and that's a little bit more rng -y, um with no block but probably has slightly higher power higher ceiling but i think i think when you're if you, i don't think you can just put the red zealous versus red wild ride because um having that no block but having that extra resource balances out all those metrics. Uh, you know, the deck is 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 cost intensive, uh, or can be cost intensive. So having those extra yellows and blues, you know, with no real downside. You know, you swap a zealous out, it's five power. You swap this in for this in, you get an extra resource. Kind of the same card. So that's my consideration is is whether that wants to go in over the zealous belting. Cool. Uh, 
you did touch on this Findles Fighting Spirit. Uh, instead of was it Wrecker Romps? You were looking at taking this out. Uh, this would be over like re probably be over reincarnate. reincarnate. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Or it could even go over one of the uh, the beat chess cards because um, most of the time you don't play any of these cards and reincarnate goes back into the deck if you ever discard it. But basically, the the concept is if you end up in a meta where people are uh, doing like um, is it like five eight uh 11 or something then suddenly your a two block is you know a three a three and a two block is better on a five power attack as we saw in the lexi meta than a three and a three because in theory you're losing out on one block of value whereas if you block a five with a fendals we saw it in nathan's story list mm -hmm. um in the blues at one point to, to combat lexi um and it was the, the concept is that you're you're gaining that and if you had ever attack with it it's like a three for six so it you, if you gain that life it's a three for six so you're, you're getting a little bit more equity on some of the other uh fives in the deck um and obviously it fills that six power uh, in this deck which is yeah. which is great the criteria okay <laughs> knucklehead now uh darren uh in the pre-release played this against me uh i was worried about it he rolled a one uh, and then because he rolled the one, uh, I won the game. So that's very, very good for me. So KO specialization, destroy this, roll a six-sided die. Until the end of the turn, you gain base intellect to the number rolled. So if you can roll a six, oh yeah, baby, I've got six intellect. Um, at the, what, I mean, I know you tested it, but sort of like, uh, that's a hell of a risk. It's um it, it falls into this this concept of okay we we looking at uh, crown of providence to help you fix your bad hands yeah um which is fab but you're only blocking two um you compare that to something like uh, flesh bag um which doesn't help you fix your bad hands but you could potentially disrupt your opponent's turn save mm -hmm. life this card is one I was very excited about and I think I might be there's not many people that read this and kind of get excited but I see this in the same camp as uh, scabskins um. It blocks three so that's that's the base of it that's the upside the upside of this card is it blocks three which is one more than crown of providence mm -hmm. uh, one life can goes a long way in flesh and blood like you know people say in magic of life is a resource and i think in fab it's not so straightforward as life is a resource you know there's a lot more factors than that there's a difference in fab there's um you know the amount of times where you've been saved by you know one point of, of armor block here you know, there's a reason why all the best armor blocks three um you know sometimes one life gives you a turn so then if it gives you a turn but then one of your turns early was clogged up because you had a bad card in your arsenal or you drew a bad hand that cop would have fixed that extra turn that almost mitigates that issue you had earlier in the game like you don't you can't you can't quantify that without video recording all of your games and sitting down and you know okay if i had cop there i would have done this and i could have drawn that and if i had knucklehead here i would have gained an extra turn and i would have killed my opponent instead of you know all these but what this does, Baz, this says if I am absolutely getting destroyed and I'm absolutely losing and I'm pretty sure I'm dead. Mm. If I roll a six, what does that do? And that's that's for me is where I want to test this card, because most games, if you block three life, that's great. Right. You know, we, yeah, yeah. we literally play, you know, boots in Bravo that give you three life and give your opponent a quicken token and we don't bat an eyelid, you know. You haven't seen anybody going like, oh, those seismic boots are awful. You know, sometimes you give people a seismic, you're like, please don't, please don't beat me to, to death with that. Uh, sorry, not seismic, quicken token. Mm -hmm. You give your opponent a quicken token, you're like, please don't beat me to death with it. I've just blocked two. Don't, don't kill me with it. Um, this card, you know, block three, it's base. So that's, you know, it, it, it's good in, in that regards. And then sometimes you have this random, it's basically scab skins, but, you know, on the, on the head, basically. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit different, but, that's how I see it, and that's how I'd like to sort of test it. As most games, maybe like most games, you block for three, and then one game in fifty, you get absolutely demolished. You roll a dice, and you say, "Well, I was dead anyway." So if I roll a one, it makes a difference. But if I roll a six, and suddenly you win, you you're back in the game, or you win the game. It's um, you know, a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably be wrong though, because you're on, on average you're going to hit less than four. But I really like the artwork. I think it's a really cool design. Um. So yeah, why not? Hey, at worst it blocks three, which is the criteria for most good pieces of armor. <laughs> I think I think that's what happened with Darren. He was just like, I'm just going to go for it anyway and see what happens. But yeah. yeah, it didn't work out for him when he played against me. Uh, Rule me: if you control an agility token, gets plus one armor. Might token get plus one armor essentially, and it's got temper. Um, uh, 
pretty much basic equipment. Are you just looking at you know building this up to get a two block, get the most value out of it, and then basically just disappears? But you're, yeah, you're taking this over tunic. Yeah, so that's the way up. It's a card that I want to try. I want to see what it does. Um, how often do you get to use tunic in the game? Is is going to be the you probably tunic is probably better than this by default. It's why it's in the maybe board. Um, not okay. seen many people talk about this card. So when uh, one of our friends Ryan mentioned it, I thought, you know, it's a card to keep on the radar. If suddenly you find that oh, some matches I need more life. Where do I find that life? Raw meat could be that. Could be that card. Okay, but um, why why wouldn't you take Barkbone over over raw meat? Because Barkbone blocks two. Barkbone blocks one. Baz. All right, sorry. Yeah, one block in it to start with. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you block two, Baz. Oh, dearie me, tuning would be long gone. <laughs> oh, it gives you it um, gives you reasons to no. say. See, I'm not a brute player. Yeah. It, it gives you R and yeah, your R and G. I think Barbone sits in the middle of Tunic and, and Raw Meat, and I think if you want life, you go Raw Meat's a potential to test. If you want, if you find it in your testing that you're, you just need to block more on hits. Let's say suddenly we're in a meta and everyone's playing snatches and stuff, mm. um, or, or or you know, suddenly we're, we're going back into that sort of Briar esque meta randomly. You know, we're not playing any heavy hitters characters, and everyone's playing Fi and you know aggro viscerai this is a card to to keep on the radar so i think it's the maybe board for me is is not really like oh these cards are and you know better options or potential but this you know if you get a two into one with this it's it's it's, it's great if you want that in a particular matchup so it's just something to remember that exists probably you will never see play that's my prediction but you know brute doesn't have a two into one and if you need a two into one then this is your option <laughs> Cool. And Scowling Flesh Bag. You mentioned it earlier. Yeah. Uh, you were taking uh, Cop over this uh, for the two armor uh, over the Block and Intimidate. It's quite funny how that's worked because I think Cop is the first card in the deck we spoke about and then Scowling Flesh Bag is the last card in the deck we spoke about. Um, you, you yeah. put the cards in. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't know how, how that's worked out that way. Um, <laughs> but basically, uh, yes, yeah, Scowling Flesh Bag is uh, insane. Um, it probably should be a card that sits in the Sigil of Solace slot um, if you play against a Fire or a Viserai and um, you get to time it rightly. Um, you can or, uh, you know, arouse the Ancient comes in, you get to take a card out of the hand and stop the next attack. It's insane. Um, that way you can get a lot of life. But when the turns you just block two with it and it doesn't really impact your opponent or your opponent plays around it efficiently, it does have its downsides whereas i you know as i said before i think this deck has um some issue in um making sure it doesn't draw into bad hands or having as we went through the deck there's a bunch of blues that cost three so you end up with a blue in your arsenal good good luck playing it without finding another blue and then you have to take a whole turn off to play a blue from your arsenal by pitching a blue it's like i might as well just not put this card here in the first place which is a consideration um but when you every time you end the turn with a card in hand that you don't put in Arsenal, you're just losing value. So yeah. um that's why for me Crown of Providence is, is above and beyond the rest you know of, of of the deck. Now this card is obviously very good and people will argue to the blue in the face with me. Um but this this card is is a face of it doesn't affect your hands, it affects your opponent's hands. Um it's a kind of like a one time old dim um ice react. So card's good. We know it's good. It's it it's it could be the deep it sh maybe it should be the default maybe I should just lay better uh, and not end up with so much gammy hands or gammy arsenals but um, you know this is what I always think as well is I know we you know getting to the end here but a lot of people say like oh you know this is the default this is that like mm -hmm. you should play this it's I think Jake of of, of top eight fame is is pretty adamant I'm insane for not wanting to play scouting flesh bag into any any fruit list i've posted ever sometimes i don't have it and he's just like this card's insane it's like seven points of value and it's the same with ben ben has the, the same thought but you know i think a lot of people they they latch on to you know, for example i think a prime example of this is vincent right every single vincent list that first came out when the card was printed and every time someone builds a vincent list without playing it they all just want to play carrying her straight away yeah. and then you play your first game with vincent and you block with carrying us and then you die to it and you go I don't understand. It blocks six. How did I die? It's it's insane. And then suddenly you go, well, actually, what you thought was the default, you have to play Carrion Husk Shadow Equipment. 
suddenly becomes a sideboard card in Vincent that sort of doesn't even see play like every time I've ever played against yeah. uh, Mike you know even in when I'm playing Bravo he doesn't present he doesn't I don't know I don't think he has carrying husk in his list or as he probably would but it's a card that everyone is so adamant that you have to play and you know sometimes it's good to 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 keep that you know the spectrum open of thoughts like knucklehead and other cards you know in card games I don't get excited by the you know the the blood rush bellows or the the cncs they're, they're cards that don't excite me the cards that excite me are like cards that you know don't exist are things that you haven't seen before and you know you know for example when crown of providence come out i think everybody under the sun was like oh this card's not that great and now what nobody plays skullcap anymore right i think arsenal pass guys were saying about how crown of providence was so so yeah and i was like this card's cr- like crazy because it does something we don't have, which is clear a dead card at your arsenal. I mean, what's the other options for that? Do we? I don't know if we have any other options in the game. Um, no, there isn't. We you have a new card from the new set, which um, if, if five power, we'd probably play it. The, the last orders or whatever it's called. But you don't have any other cards that clear your arsenal without playing it. So, you know, I think keeping all these different options on your on your radius when building decks or playing decks or um going into a meta is is where it at and i think ko allows you to have some fun with that as well because you know all these different six power on hits etc with a might they become seven so it allows you to keep this sort of it's a the azuri mindset right the azuri players you know i think one week darren has a raised face and the next week he he has um humble or whatever like you can mix these things up because you know it's a deck that can leverage those and i think this deck can do that and i think you know people have said about knucklehead and they sort of discount it straight away because yeah on paper scowling flesh bag and cop are both better than and knucklehead but you know you you have that ability to like you know let's say let's say the block three averages out to the other cards average you know knucklehead's upside is is you're absolutely getting battered and you're on a six and you win the game probably not as good as having something as consistent as the other two but it's something to um you know to consider and you know uh going forward i think all these cards and i think that's what's nice about flesh and blood at the moment is we're moving away from this welcome to the wraith feel of everything is a two for six that blocks three and you know these sort of boring stat lines to get in a bit more you know it's nice that this card exists and uh some of these more niche cards so it's it, i think flesh and blood's going in a good way to make things exciting and kind of hoping eventually we'll move into a direction where we can play one offs in our deck because we know we'll see them and they have really cool and interesting effects that you don't get on other cards that you might not need consistently all the time so um yeah that's why these cards are maybe bored they're not you know necessarily better than what we're already playing but i think discounting them because you think that is just a losing battle, right? Like we've had it in the past where people have, you know, they discount cards and then suddenly it's like, actually this card's just insane. I think cop is, is one of the big, one of those big ones that come out, um, you know, first and everyone was like, nah, that's, it's fine. Is it going to replace three life from Skullcap? Yeah, that's how it does. Cause yeah, it's just, it's <laughs> well, just Skullcap crazy. is coming back when you need that extra, but it, yeah. it, you've got to play it's, around that i need to have less life to get the most benefit out of it so yeah you know, and if you need a skull cap in 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 ko this is your skull cap yeah yeah indeed nothing like, yeah indeed so yeah but, it's but the thing cap, is so. like heavy hitters has, has certainly opened up a whole swathe of deck building um refreshed sort of like um you know uh, uh classes for sure um like like ko's and and brute being access uh, making blues more accessible um you know to 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 open up their line their lines um but but the the meta's so new um ko soon so new um that we're going to see a whole host of different sort of like builds for ko coming through there's there's loads of builds for ko at the minute but um we're certainly going to be keeping our eye on you dave um how you perform sort of like during the rtn season with this um how you perform at mana screw armories which i will be back to recording um mm-hmm again so um we can see how this evolves we'll touch back on this um uh, and certainly see how these 16 maybe cards of they might have made it into the main deck they might it might have made it into the inventory um it all depends basically how the meta for heavy hitters is going to shift i know there's been a lot of um you know tier lists and everybody's tier list is different because nobody actually knows until sort of like you know the first big tournament is is going to be here 
Yeah. You know, maybe we're going to yeah. see sort of like some of that uh, meta coming through in heart uh, uh, this weekend at the calling. Um, and then, you know, next weekend in Liverpool. Um, and, and we'll see those, um, you know, we'll see what what the meta actually shapes in and, and see how your deck develops into it. Um, but if you've liked this uh, show uh, and you want me to do more deck techs, um, there's certainly uh, I'm more than willing to do them uh, and like and subscribe um, so you don't miss any that are, that are coming out. Um, the meta report's coming soon um, so we can follow the uh, RTN season that starts basically uh, in about two weeks. I think we're off uh, and off and running to RTNs. Um, there is a lot more um, to come so I'll be covering all of the UK RTNs, Ireland and now I will be covering Sweden. Um, so look out for those. I might have a few Barcelona ones nice. as well. So loads of information coming. Um, Dave, I wish you all the very best with this deck, mate. Um, I know you've been having a lot of fun on 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 um, uh, Talashar with this uh, and having some success, uh, apart from when you um, watch telly and try and play at the same time. <laughs> I play on my mobile phone a lot, so it doesn't help. But, you know, Flesh and Blood, we spoke about this yesterday, Flesh and Blood is about, especially Talashar, it's just about having, you know, just you're gauging when people post win rates and stuff. Um, I, my my favourite win rates to ever hear about from Talashar is 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 Kales because he always posts him some insanely high win rate with Bravo, but what it, what makes it so fun from everyone else is the fact that you know that he's probably probably about eight beers deep before he started playing, so it kind of it kind of makes that even more impressive that it's so high because he's probably struggling to press the buttons and play. So the way normally people post like I've got a ninety eight percent win rate with my Talashar deck, it's like what does that mean like. You know, um, but yeah, I think yeah. it's um, sometimes it can be a bit a bit hard to gauge how a deck actually performs until it actually makes it into the tournaments. You know, Talashar yeah, is a great deck well. for for kind of getting muscle memory and seeing lines. Um, um, yeah. But the, the trouble with with Talashar is, um, you know, it it. it it's good for those, but not particularly great for testing overall. You can't chat with chat with your mate over the lines that you should have played over the one that you did play. So it has got its place, um, but yep. you know it's not the be all and end all for testing. As, um, but yeah, yeah, it's why I play. It's I say it's it's great. Like when you're you're you know with a little one when she's going to bed. If I'm sat on the floor, I might be able to just play a quick game on my phone. Um, you know, play a quick play, play a quick game at lunchtime at work, or whatever. It's nice that it works on on mobile, so you can sort of keep getting those reps in, um, and getting an idea, getting a feel of for, for what your deck is doing. Um, and I say it's it's going to be interesting to see how this meta evolves. So I think there's a lot of room, I think, for for different decks to to come out of the woodwork. So yeah, yeah I think most people think it's going to be Bravo Bonk. Whether or not it's Bravo Bonk, we shall see. So, um, but yeah, the, the, these coming weeks will tell. Um, thank you so much, Dave, for sharing this. Um, uh, there will be a link in the description so you can see that. Um, if you want to join my Patreon, uh, the link will be on there as well. You get a discount on uh, Flesh and Blood products at Thistle Tavern, which uh, sell singles and um, decks. Uh, you can get cases, you can get displays. If you're on tokens, um, you can go to buy the same token um, and uh, you get discount there as well. Uh, so uh, we're going to wrap it up there. I look forward to recapping this, mate. I'm so looking forward yeah, to that. Me too. Uh, and we shall see everybody else very soon. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye -bye. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.